Good morning, my dear brother and sister in Christ. The Lord be with you. Now, first of all, I'd like to wish all of you a very blessed uh, New Year 2021. Now, before the service begins, I have a few announcements here for each one of us to take note because uh, uh, some of us probably this is our first time uh, to our church and uh, some of us have been to our church for many times but you have forgotten now we are living in the new norm. Right? There are a few things that I would like to highlight. The first thing is toilet, very important. Now, those of us who want to go to the toilet, we only have one entrance and also an uh, exit. So please use the back exit to go to the washroom and then when you come in, please use the main en the entrance there at the side door. Right? This is the SOP, there's one entrance. Uh, one exit. So after the service, again, there's only one exit here. So please uh, follow the, the arrow and, and orderly uh, leave uh, the, the church. That's the first one. And second, wear your mask. Uh, very important. All of us are wearing our, our mask uh, throughout the whole uh, service and also wear correctly. Lah, huh? Wear correctly, right? So the third is uh, Holy Communion. For those of us who are uh, but confirm and uh, you can take Holy Communion. Uh, please stay where you are. You have seen the video. So the server and also uh, the, the lay leader and myself will serve you uh, where you are seated. Huh? So you just uh, stand up for those of us who can take Holy Communion. Uh, please uh, stand up after the consecration uh, prayer. So we will be served at the pew. Now the next one is the offering, offering box. Uh, we are not going to have uh, uh, collecting offering, uh, the offering bag will not uh, be passed around yeah, uh, in the service. So after the service, you may drop your offering in our offering box on your way out. Right? So I think that's all our announcement for those who follow uh, online. So this is a live streaming from uh, St. Michael Church. So let's prepare our heart. And this morning is also Holy Communion Sunday. For those of us uh, at home, uh, please prepare your bread and also your wine and prepare your heart to receive the Holy Communion. Thank you very much. And let's prepare our heart to worship the Lord. Thank you.
brothers and sisters, in brothers and sisters in Christ, very good morning. Let us stand. We begin our service by singing the hymn number eight. Now thank we all our God. Once again, brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome back to our worship service this morning, which will be streamed online. Um, let us say the collect for purity together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take the collect for today. We pray together. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son shared at Nazareth the life of an earthly home, help us to live as the Holy Family, united in love and obedience and bring us at last to our home in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the Bible reading. The first reading this morning is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. To 12. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, 
I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me by the working of His power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us all stand for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the peoples, chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For all of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worship him. Then they opened the treasures and presented him the gifts of gold and of incense and of mirth. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to the country by another road. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that, Lord, you have created. And this is a day that, Lord, you have made truly. We want to rejoice and be glad in it, especially, Lord, for this very special Sunday, first Sunday of 2021. We once again want to thank you, Lord, for all your blessing, your grace upon us. Even, Lord, today that we can come together to worship you, Lord, as a family here in this place. So we pray, even as we open up your words, we ask you, Lord, to speak to us and may your words, Lord, continue to strengthen our faith and help us, Lord, to guide us as we go through uh, this new year. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated, my dear brother and sister in Christ. The Lord be with you. So once again, we want to welcome all of you to our service uh, this morning. We want to welcome those who follow the live uh, streaming uh, from church. So once again, a very blessed uh, new year, uh, 2021. Uh, on 31st of December, so uh, my family have a, I wouldn't call it a celebration, but uh, at least we, uh, we have a time, we have time together to, to eat together. So uh, my daughter has made a cake, I like the cake because at first he said bye, bye bye 2020 and then welcome 2021. Now for some of us probably you feel that 2021 seems to be very short. 
My children told me, I am 20, 21, how get? Uh, uh, he wouldn't say Cantonese. Uh, very fast, uh, very fast. Uh, uh, that means uh, uh, 2020 seems to be very fast. And, but others uh, feel that 2020 seems to be very long. I don't know how you feel about 2020. Since the beginning of MCO in, in March this year, uh, last year, our attention is on COVID-19. Uh, even today, when you, when you open the newspaper or any media, you still see the word COVID-19. In fact, you don't have to search for it. Uh, so even when you do Google Translate, so Google Translate also gives you a small icon there, COVID-19. So when you op open your Google, again, there's COVID-19. Everywhere you go, you see COVID-19. So our attention is on this small virus that cannot be seen by our physical eyes. The number of COVID-19 cases is so unpredictable. Today, we have 20 cases. Wow, hallelujah, God answered our prayer. The next day, it may jump to 200 cases. Now, 2020 ended with a record high. If those of us who follow the news, record highs of 2,525 cases. Good number, 2525 in a single day on 31st of December, 2020. So when is this pandemic going to be over? When can we return to a normal life as it was before the pandemic? We don't have to wear our masks. Uh, we can uh, sit together uh, in a table, in coffee shop, even my family. We went to certain shop in Kota Kinabalu, in Sandakan. We need to sit on different tables. So when, is this, when can we return to our normal life as before the pandemic? And some are worrying about losing their job. Will I be the next person uh, to be laid off in the company if the situation doesn't change? How long can my business survive? Even A Asia boss Tony Fernandez, I saw this picture very interesting, become food delivery rider. Can you show the photograph? Because uh, I, uh, yeah. So even Tony Fernandez, uh, it now also become food delivery rider for his company, Food, uh, food, food Apps, uh, Tony Fernandez. So what am I going to do in 2021? There's a Chinese saying, right? Normally, I will say it in Chinese New Year, right? But now I say it in the Chinese New Year also, uh, but for Mao Nian, uh, uh, the Chinese say, Nian nan guo, nan guo nian, nian nian nan guo, nian nian guo. Because I preach in the English and the BM service, I put it in Google Translate and ask Google to translate for me. You know what Google translate for me? Google say, set every year, set every year, and set every year. Tell your person next to you, don't trust Google Translate 100%. Set every year, set every year. Of course, of course that is not what it means. It means uh, 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 people have to go through hard times, even though hard times happen. So we must move on. Just like any day in our life, we do not know what is going to happen in the next hours, but life must go on. So recently, I learned an acronym. The acronym already been there for many, many years since, uh, since the September 9-11 in America. So the military has come up with this, this acronym called VUCA. Together we say VUCA. So I, I think the term VUCA somehow describes year 20. 21. So what is VUCA? So VUCA stands for, the V stands for volatile. Volatile means change is rapid and unpredictable in its nature and also extent. Anything can change. We do not know what's going to happen after 10th of January. That's why for those of us who come uh, to our service, we ask you to register up to 10th of January uh, because after 14th of January, we do not know what's going to happen because Change is so rapid and so unpredictable. The U stands for uncertain. Together we say uncertain. So the present is unclear and the future is so uncertain. That's why some business businesses, uh, businessmen, they do not know how to plan because it's so uncertain what's going to happen. The future is uncertain. And the C stands for complex. Together we say complex. So many different and interconnected factors that come in play with the potential to, ca to cause chaos and also confusion. And last but not least is A stands for ambiguous. There's a lack of clarity or awareness about the situation. I don't know about you. I feel that the word walker describes 
year 2021. So, brother and sister in Christ, as a follower of Christ, how do we prepare ourselves to face, to enter a vogue hour? How do we prepare ourselves for the new beginning? So in the next few weeks, we are going to look at a few Bible characters. We want to learn from their experience. We want to learn from their encounter with God as they, as they begin a, a new journey, as they, begin their, 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 as, they, as, they, as they have a new beginning in their life journey. So the first person this morning, I have chosen two uh, Old Testament uh, character. Uh, next week, another two. So probably we go to, uh, I think Old Testament has more character to choose than New Testament. So the first person I need to choose is Abraham. Together we say Abraham. So the Abraham that God gave him a promise of blessing. Abraham, later his name was changed to Abraham, has a new beginning when God called him to leave his country, to leave his people, to leave his father's household and go to the place that God will show him. And it took courage for Abraham, later changed to Abraham, to leave his home and to follow where God would lead him. It took courage for, for, for Abraham to, to respond to God because he did not know where he was going. It's quite scary if someone asks you to go someday and then the person tells you, I, you just go, I will tell you later. And that's very scary. It took courage for Abraham to respond to God's call because he did not know where he was going. Genesis chapter 11, verse 31 tells us that Abraham and his family left Ur. And in order to enter the land of Canaan. But there's no indication at all that, that, that Abraham has any familiarity with the land that God called him to go. So we know that Abraham was going to the land of Canaan. But Abraham left Haran. The Bible says, not knowing where he was going. Let me read to you Hebrew 11.8. By faith, when called to go to a place, he would later receive at his inheritance, obey and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Now, familiarity with an area uh, 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 would allow a person to plan uh, the, the, the best route and also to prepare the person to face specific challenges in the places, in the places that the person goes. So, if you know the place well, if you know the place well, then easier for you. You can plan the best route and you are more prepared to face the specific challenges in that place. Now, nowadays, uh, of course, we miss flying, uh, we miss traveling. Uh. Some, uh, I, I saw uh, uh, there are some people in Singapore, uh, Singapore Airlines offer fly nowhere. Not nowhere, no, nowhere. Uh. Fly nowhere, just go to the aeroplane, just pretend that you're going somewhere. And some people just go to the aeroplane and eat something, pay 400 ringgit just to eat something, just to feel you're in an aeroplane and you are flying. I'm not sure how many of you, you are dying to fly. Uh, but there are some people, they have missed flying. Now, for, for some of us, we have this experience before. I hope that uh, very soon we are able to visit, uh, 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 go overseas to visit other country. So nowadays, when we visit a country, we will, uh, we will first read the travel blog in the internet. And then uh, we watch video of those who have, have traveled to those countries so that we can plan our trip well. Last week after uh, Christmas Day on 26, my family and I, uh, we were in Kota Kinabalu, just take a break. Huh? So uh, before we went, of course, we booked all our accommodation, we planned our journey, listen, huh? we even planned what to eat every day. Huh? Month, our breakfast, our lunch, our, our dinner, we need to plan where to go, what to eat, what to buy, everything. I'm not sure about you as a parent's. One of the most stressful uh, questions for parents during MCO is this. What are we going to eat today? Huh? The first, after finish their lunch, the dinner, what are they going to eat tomorrow? Aiyah, uh, you just finished your dinner, now already ask what you're going to eat today. Now we learn to put down all the menu. So you want to eat, you want to know what you're going to eat? Look at the menu, then you know already. So one of the most stressful questions is, what are we going to eat today? So we even plan what to eat every day because we know the place well, because we know Kota Kinabalu well, we know where we are heading to. But Abraham did not have this 
advantage. Instead, he simply put his faith in God and followed the Lord. And second, he took courage because he had to leave the home that he has established for himself in Haran. He already established his own career, established his own family in Haran, and now he has to leave everything and to go to the place that he didn't even uh, been told by God before he left Haran. So it took courage for him to respond to God's call. Abraham was 75 years old when God called him. Now, yes, generally people live longer then, but he was still not very far from old age. What does it mean, old age? Old age is the term that used to describe Abraham in the book of Genesis, means 100 years old. How many of you 100 years old? How many of you 75 years and above? Or you do not want to admit, or you forget your age already? Yeah, yeah. I think some of us here, you are above 75 uh, years old. So uh, 75 years old is, is, is not very far from old age. So Abraham left with no guarantee he would ever get settled again. There's no guarantee at all. 75 years already. Uh, how long does it take to reach Canaan? He doesn't know. So he has no, he left Haram with no guarantee that he would ever get settled again. You know, I discovered one of the reasons why many people was, so, uh, were so stressful and feeling insecure during the pandemic uh, because nothing can guarantee us that we will not be infected, we will not be affected by COVID-19. You can have all the SOP, la. you can follow everything, la. SOP set by the government or whatever precaution that you take, but you have no guarantee that you will not be infected or you will not be affected by COVID-19. So when we buy an electric, electrical good, for example, you buy an acorn, what you want, you want guarantee, you want warranty from the shop. You buy an acorn, you want the shop, the seller, the, 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 the shop to give you 10 years warranty on the compressor. So some shop even give you extended warranty as long as you are willing to pay more. Lah. But when we come to COVID-19, the government, even the WHO, World Health Organization, cannot guarantee when the pandemic will be over. Have you read any news that the WHO tell you pandemic will be over next month? No. Government cannot give us guarantee. The WHO cannot give a guarantee and no one can guarantee the vaccine will be 100% effective. Some of us, I heard, even if the vaccine comes to Sandakana, I may not take first, you know. Maybe I take two years or let Daniel take first and then I see what's going to happen to you first. I do not know how many of you are willing to volunteer yourself. Uh, I'm not sure whether you read the news. The first person who volunteered himself in Malaysia is our Prime Minister. How many of us can say the, the vaccine is 100% effective? Your money in bank or your investment in property, your palm oil estate cannot guarantee you can survive the pandemic. Our money in bank cannot help us even to check in uh, to private hospital. When the person infected with COVID-19, uh, I have money, I want to check into private hospital. No way. Everyone go to HDOK, called Hospital Duchess of Kent. It's a government hospital. You have no way to check into the most expensive hospital in Sandakan or in, in Kota Kinabalu or in Sabah if the person is infected with COVID-19. Your money cannot help you. Nobody, no hospital are willing to accept any COVID-19 cases in Sabah except the government hospital. So what do we do in this kind of situation? Together we say, let us learn from Abraham, one, two, go. Let's learn from Abraham. Abraham knew what was right. God told him what to do. God told him, go to the land, I will show you. And he just responded by faith. And Abraham knew what was right because God revealed it to him. I learned so much in 2020. One of the things as a pastor, you know, in the past, I have to depend on my own experience. If I have any problem, for example, any challenges in the church, 
and uh, I, I can always ask some of my senior, some of people who are more experienced in ministry. For example, Pastor Margaret had 30 over years of ministry, pastoral experience. I may ask, I, I, I can go to her and ask her for advice. I can ask some other pastor that I know have more experience in uh, pastoral ministry. But when we come to this COVID-19, uh, I don't know who to ask because none of us have gone through the same experience. None of us know how, don't know how, how to run a church, that uh, uh, pastor a church that uh, people cannot come to church and to do online la, and live. La. All these things, I, will, I was not taught in theological, so I have not learned anything about this. Praise the Lord. So when you cannot find any help, I'm not saying when you cannot find, you look to God. La. But you have no other way. Only look to God and ask the Lord to show you what to do next. Abraham knew what was right because God revealed to him. But the most important lesson for Abraham to take the courage, the most important reason for Abraham to take the courage to have a new beginning because he believed in God's promises. Together we say God's promises. So Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, God promised to make him a great nation. And God promised to him through his seed, all the family of the earth would be blessed. Though Abraham was childless during the time when, when God called him, but God promised him descendant. God promised his descendant just like star in the sky and also sand at the seashore. And what he did, he believed. And because of his belief, Abraham became the father of all who believe. Let's read together Romans 4, 11. Together we read, one, two, go. And he received... So then, he is the father of all who believe, but have not been circumcised, in order that righteousness might credited to them. It is a promise of blessing that give him courage to move on and to respond to God's call, to go to a place where God will show him later. It's a promise of blessing to him, a promise of blessing to his family, and also a promise of blessing to his descendant, including you and I. And we are spiritual children of Father Abraham. So, brother and sister in Christ, let us be encouraged to know that our God is a God of blessing. So, as an earthly father, we want to bless our children as much as we could. We want to give them, we, uh, we want to give them best education. We want to give them best food. We want to give them the best family environment as much as we could. We want to bless our children. How much more our heavenly Father would like to bless us? as we begin year 2021. So I want to encourage us to believe in your heart that our God is a God of blessing and receive by faith His blessing. Commit ourselves to do at least, at least these two things. Huh? There are many things, but I just want to encourage you at least to do, do these two things because these two things at least come with promises. There are many things, but there are two things that I want you to encourage you to first, to worship or serve the Lord and praise Him. Let me just read to you Exodus 23, 25. This is what God said to the Israelites. Worship the Lord your God. In the Chinese, He says, serve the Lord your God and His blessing will be on your food and also on your water. And I will take away sickness from among you. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, he said, Praise be to the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So these are the two things I want to encourage, at least they are the two things I want to encourage you to continue to do as you did in 2020 or in the past. That is to worship the Lord, to serve the Lord, and to praise Him. And the Lord said, Your blessing will be on your food and also your water. That's the first person, Abraham. The second person who has a new beginning in his life is Moses. Together we say Moses. 
So Moses received a promise of God's name. Abraham received a promise of blessing. Moses was called to rescue the Israelites from slavery after spending 40 years as a shepherd uh, uh, in the wilderness as, at, at Midian. Uh, 40 years ago, because when God called Abraham to, to deliver the Israelites, he was 80 years old. So 40 years ago, Moses felt that he was ready to lead God's people. 40 years ago, he was full of energy and ready to lead God's people. So 40 years ago, he felt that uh, he wanted to do something. He had been praying for his own people. So he wanted to deliver his people from slavery. But God sent him to the wilderness to be a shepherd instead of being a deliverer. Why? Because God's timing for Moses has not come yet. Moses needed further training in the wilderness as a shepherd. He needed the training of character so that he will be more humble. So the Lord sometimes trains us, sometimes the Lord will not give us this task first, will not ask us to do something first because he wants to train our character, for example, to be more humble. The Lord gave him theological training as a shepherd so that he will know God more. And then God also trained his skill as a shepherd so that he, are more ready, he is more ready to become a, a leader. So 40 years later, after, after he spent 40 years in wilderness, so when God sent him to Pharaoh, to talk to Pharaoh, to bring Israelite, the Israelites out of Egypt, he felt himself not ready for the task. So Moses gave many reasons why he could not accept the call. And one of them is this. Moses said to God, I don't know your name. In Exodus 3.13, it says, Moses said to God, you know, suppose I'll go, this is one of the reasons. Other reasons say, I'm not capable, la, this, la, I'm not good in talking. La, and this is a, another one. He huh? says, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your father has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? Moses being a representative of God, he had to be able to disclose, he has to be able to tell the people that he's going to lead his character to the Israelites. Otherwise, nobody will believe him. You just say, I come here to deliver you. Tell me the person who deliver you. Tell me the name of the God who deliver you. Of course, God's name, Jehovah or Yahweh, has been known centuries ago. In fact, the name was familiar to the patriarch like Abraham, like Jacob, and also Isaac. But what Moses asked was this, what does your name mean? What does your name mean, Yahweh? What kind of a God are you? This is the first question and answer session in the Bible. If you have a Bible quiz, if they ask you, tell me which words give you the first question and answer in the Bible, that is in Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 to 14. God said to Moses, together we read, one, two, go. I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. I am who I am. Very difficult to translate uh, from the original language. Mean God is self-existent. And God is self-eternal. God is self-immortal. God is self-unchangeable. God is always was. And God is always is. And God always will be the faithful and the dependent God, dependable God who call himself, I am. Together we say, I am. Maybe you ask the question, I ask the question, is there anything in the world that has no beginning? Is there anything in the world that always exists, was, is, and will be? Is there anything that you know that always exists and was and is and will be, you know, past tense, present tense, and future tense. So something that is was and also is and also will be, is there something that we know? The answer is yes. Truth has no beginning and always exists. 
The best example is uh, 2 plus 2 equal to 4 does not need any beginning. Does not need beginning. 2 plus 2 equal to 4 does not exist, does not begin only when your mother gave birth to you. It was always there. 2 plus 2 equal to 4. Before the sun shine, shine forth its light, 2 plus 2 equal to 4 already exists. It does not need a beginning. Truth does not need a beginning. Truth always exists. Moses was in awe after hearing God's name. I am living in a changing world. The world that I'm living is not self-existent. The world is not immortal. In fact, my physical body is changing too. I couldn't say I am who I am. I could only say I was a child. I am an adult now. And one day I will die. I cannot say I am who I am. I am in the process of changing. But now I'm standing before a God who is unchanging self-existent and forever immortal. So God revealed his name to Moses as a promise to him and God's character is in his name. So when God proclaimed his name to Moses that he was and he is and he will ever be, it is not just an empty statement. God is proclaiming his state of being in the context of Exodus Chapter 3, so when God called Moses, God said to Moses, He said, God has seen the misery of His people in Egypt in the past 400 years. How many of you can see what happened to a person 400 years? You cannot. God said, I have seen their misery in the past 40, 400 years in Egypt. I have seen how they suffer. I have heard the cry of His people generation after generation how many generations that we can have. But God said, I have heard the cry of my people generation after generation and I am concerned for them and I have promised to come and rescue them. Brother and sister in Christ, God has always been with His children. And then God always is with His children and God will always be His children. Can you see that? The past the present, and the future. And God's very nature is revealed in His name. And His nature is to be with His children. This is the same God that you and I believe. God has seen our misery in 2020. He has heard the cry of His people. And He is concerned for every one of us. And God has promised to save us. You and I may not have the opportunity to hear God say to you in person, hey, Leung, I am who I am. Or Johnny, I am who I am. You may not have the opportunity to hear direct from God as we begin 2021. But we know the son who was born on Christmas Day, that's Jesus, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So in the gospel, Jesus took the name I am and he completed it. And each I am has a promise attached to it. If you read John, John gospel, there are at least seven I am in John gospel. Every I am, when you are a Jew, when you are, when you are an Israelite, then you know when Jesus said I am, immediately he reminds you about God who, speak, who, spoke, to Abraham, who spoke to Moses and introduce himself to Moses as I am. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Together we say, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Not I was, not I will be. I am the bread of life. Just like bread sustains physical life, Christ offers and sustains our spiritual life. So I want to encourage you, brother and sister in Christ, my family, I encourage all of them. So in the beginning of the year, let's read together New Testament. So I'm so glad that our children ministry last year, uh, during our children ministry celebration, so one of the, of course, uh, we have a Google Meet, right? Very, very fruitful Google Meet with the children. I think about 70 plus, 
all, all in all, huh? 70 plus. Then after that, the next day, Saturday, they have their meeting, Google. And then the following day, those who follow the meeting, then they are going to receive a, 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 a small goodie bags. Huh? In the goodie bags, they have food. Ah, enjoy. Huh? Uh, they have food, uh, they are goodies, uh, uh, food to eat. But there's one more food that cannot be eaten physically. That is a New Testament Bible. Very interesting. Even the Bible consider goodies. <laughs> Encourage us to read the Bible, to feed yourself with the Word of God. Don't only take the Bible, but let's encourage our children to read the Bible. And yesterday, I encouraged my staff, I say, delight in the Word of God. Together, we say, delight in the Word of God. So enjoy the Word of God just like you enjoy your favorite food and also your favorite dessert. And then Jesus said, I am the light of the world. To a world lost in darkness, Jesus offered himself as a guide to us. And then Jesus said, I am the door of the ship. So as the door of the ship, Jesus protects his followers as shepherds protect their flock from the predator. And then Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. Death is not the final word for those in Christ. So death is not the, the end of those who are in Christ because there's life after with Jesus because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. And I am the good shepherd. Jesus is committed to care and watch over those who belong to him. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is source of all truth and knowledge about God. And in him, we not only can find life, but life that is abundant. Jesus said, I come to give you life. Thank God it doesn't stop there. How many of you do not have life? Take out your hand. Every one of us has life. But what Jesus wants to give us is abundant life. Together we say abundant life. So God said, Jesus said, I come to give you life. Of course, because life comes from God. You have life. But Jesus said, not only give you life, life that is abundant. Life that is overflowing. Life that can become a blessing for many people. You only live for yourself. That is not abundant life. You only live for your own selfish desire. That is not called abundant life. You live your life only want to receive blessing. It's not abundant life. I just learned something from a pastor that very easy. Every one of us, take out your hand. Take out your hand. Can you take out your hand? Can you bend your finger? Bend. Yeah, if you have a problem to bend your finger, please go and see Dr. Ten. Yeah, so that means something. You can bend your finger, it's very easy. But what about now you just open and try to bend it outside? Bend it outside, try to bend it. Is it very very pleasant experience? No. When you hold your, when you, when you take in your finger, when you bend your finger inside, very easy. Very easy to take. But to give, uh, got pain one, you know. That pain, this pain when you want to give. That's why it's not easy to give. Abundant love is something that you want to give. The Chinese say, Sometimes our giving is not come to the point that we feel the pain when we give. We just like that. This one is very to receive something is easy. But to give, it takes pain to give. It's not easy to give. Our hand already teaches us this very important lesson. So Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And last but not least, I am the true wine. Together we say, I am the true wine. Jesus said, I am the wine, and you are the branches. So by attaching ourselves to Christ, we enable his life to flow and through us, and then we can bear fruit that will honor our Father. So, brother and sister in Christ, I begin with this. How to prepare ourselves to face the vocabulary, the volatile, the uncertain, the complex and ambiguous world and begin year 2021. My conclusion is this. We need God's unchanging promises in the Bible. Imagine a parent has written a view for their children putting down all the inheritance they are going to receive. So when the children read it, they will pay attention to every details in the will. Why? Because every sentence 
every sentence, each sentence in the view may have something for them to claim as a child. Claim as their children. Therefore, they read very carefully because every sentence, every dot uh, may have something for them to claim. So I challenge you, brother and sister in Christ, maybe this is not how we read the Word of God. I want to challenge you and challenge myself to read the Word of God as if you are reading a will. Read carefully. Look for the promises you can claim as God's children. I can guarantee you. Uh, this one I can guarantee you. Lah. I can guarantee you. If you read the Word of God with that kind of attitude, then I can guarantee you, you will be surprised and astonished by the richness and the abundance of His promises for you now and for your future. So as we begin New Year 2021, believe and receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Let's come before the Lord this morning. The Lord may have a word for you as you listen to the message in the last 20, 30 minutes. Do not just receive the word, but respond to the word of God because that's the word that the Lord speaks to you. Maybe there's only one sentence. Maybe there's only one, one, one word Maybe one Bible verse that the Lord has spoken specifically to you. If you have the Holy Spirit in us, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you know the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and let's respond to the Word of God. That may be the Word that the Lord wants to give you in the beginning of 2021 and to carry you through in the days to come. So respond to the Word of God. Even this morning for you to come to this church, it takes courage. You may have fear. Fear of being infected, being very affected, fear of COVID-19. But the fact that we are here this morning, and some of us who are falling online, that the Lord has a word for each one of us. So let's respond to the word of God. Respond to the voice of God this morning. Our gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for your word is powerful, sharper than any double-edged sword that can penetrate our soul and spirit and penetrate our mind. And we thank you, Lord, because you are a living God, that you are speaking to each one of us. We thank you once again, Lord, for your grace that this morning we can come together, whether on site or online, to hear your words, to hear what you want to speak to us in the beginning of 2021. So we ask you, Lord, to continue to lead us because you are the great I am. Jesus, you are the great I am. The one who spoke to Moses, and today we hear the same message that you have spoken to Moses. And we have the privilege to know the great I am that is your only son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Shall we all stand? Let us put our faith in God in the word of the Nicene Creed. We declare all together, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated, my dear brother and sister in Christ. The Lord be with you. So once again, we welcome to our first uh, Sunday service in 2021. Uh, uh, God willing, we will continue to have on-site service in the weeks uh, to come. So welcome, and we want to praise God for those who follow uh, our online uh, streaming. So welcome to our service uh, this morning. Of course, all of us, this is your first time to church in 2021. Unless you came yesterday, like, I don't know. Huh? But this is our first time uh, to worship the Lord together as a family uh, this year. So I want to welcome all of you. And we also want to welcome a family, a Shia, a Shia family. We want to welcome uh, them. They are with us, a family with us. And we also want to express our deepest condolence uh, to the family uh, for the passing away of their, of their loved one. So uh, I want to welcome you this morning to our church. Uh, yeah. Let's put our hand together to welcome every one of us uh, this morning. Welcome. Now, I would like to highlight a few announcements. The first one, of course, our Holy Communion. For those of us who follow online, please prepare your bread and wine for the online Holy Communion. For those who are on site, so during the Holy Communion, uh, we will distribute the bread and wine to you wherever you are seated. So please uh, stand up if you, are, uh, you, you, you can take Holy Communion, right? So uh, after the consecration uh, prayer. Now, for those uh, uh, 10th of January, next Sunday, God willing, we still have on-site service, as I say, uh, anything can change, right? Like Christmas service. Today we say we can have Christmas service. The following day, the government say only 30%. And the following day, you say okay. So no okay, lah. so we just follow online. So I do not know whether it will change, but uh, if according to what we have planned, so 10th of January, we will continue to have our, on, our on-site service and also live streaming. Of course, uh, we may have uh, we open other services. We have six services on Sunday. We only have three services uh, as soft opening as advised by the PCC. We just have a soft opening, three services. Hopefully, by third week, we can start our Segundo and also our San Gabriel and also our Cantonese service on Sunday. Uh, but for the time being, so next Sunday, please register so that uh, you, you, we know who, uh, who, are, who will be coming for the service. Right? You can use Google Form or you can call the church office to book, you reserve your, your seat. Now, online prayer meeting will only begin next week. Huh? So this week, we only have a Zoom, a Zoom prayer meeting. So next Wednesday, we are going to continue our online prayer meeting. Confirmation class will start this coming Saturday. Pastor Margaret? Yeah. Uh, every Saturday, uh, but Saturday we will have continue our confirmation class. It's Zoom confirmation class. It's still Zoom confirmation class. So 9th of January, for those of us already registered, uh, please uh, don't forget, 3 o'clock uh, every uh, Saturday. Now, uh, church office reopen, right? Our office hour back to normal, starting from tomorrow, from 8 o'clock to 4.30, from Monday to Friday, and then Saturday from 8 o'clock to 12.30. Uh, now, this morning, we also want to congratulate our evangelist. Not sure, is that uh, the picture here? We want to congratulate our evangelist, uh, Stephanus uh, uh, Miskinan. Uh, he has completed his uh, Bachelor of Theology, BTH. Uh, we jokingly say BTH is Bole Tahan. Uh, Bole Tahan, that means uh, Bachelor of Theology uh, with Anglican Training Institute. Uh, so he got a degree in theology. Uh, so let's put a hand together to congratulate our... <laughs> Brother, our evangelist, uh, Stephanus, yeah, praise the Lord. So praise the Lord for, for him, for his endurance. Finally, uh, he has completed his uh, study with ATI. So last but not least is tithe and offering. So after the service, uh, we do not have an uh, offering bag passing around this morning in our service. So after the service, you can drop your offering in an offering box on your way out. Uh, or you can use a booth a application or you can do online banking. And some even can go to the church uh, to give your tithe and offering unto the Lord. I think that's all our announcement for this uh, Sunday. Let's prepare our heart to enter into the time of intercession.
So let us uh, prepare our heart. Let's sit on you to pray. Our gracious Father, thank you that we are able to resume on sign church service once again. We thank you we can worship you in spirit and truth in these years of 2021. We wanted to leave your name on high. Thank you for being in our midst. Hear us as we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we commit our country, Malaysia, our states of Sabah and our cities and Dagan to you. We give you thanks for the peace and harmony we enjoy in our country. Grant wisdom to our common leaders in making wise decisions and in shaping the national policies in governing the country with righteousness and truth. Let your love and peace surround the people of this nation always. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the medical researchers, the doctors and the nurses for their endurance of love and care in treating those who are infected and sick, that many may be healed. We are hold to you the vulnerable, the fearful, the seriously ill and the dying, that they may feel your comfort and peace during this time of pain and suffering. May your healing grace be upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our loving God, we seek your mercy to stop the spread of this COVID-19 virus. We pray that this virus will recede and vanish totally in Jesus' name. Lord, give wisdom to the people to follow strictly to the instructions of the authority to ensure the containment and mitigations of this situation, that the infected cases will decline rapidly. Father, we also pray for your divine wisdom, understandings, and unity for all the leaders of the churches in Malaysia. Stir their hearts to unite in prayers for our country, and especially for the businesses to rebound, to revive the economy of this nation with strength and stability. Thank you, Lord. Gracious Father, we give thanks to you for your provision and protection upon St. Michael Church in 2020. We pray that this new year, 2021, will also be another year of your favor through our perseverance and obedience of faith in you. Lord, continue to grant your blessings power and strength upon Archdeacon Young as he leads the church together with Pastor Margaret, the evangelists, the PCC and the staff. May you grant them protection, unity and teamwork as they work together in serving others. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Together we confess. Merciful God, our Heavenly Father, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought, word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We repent and are sorry for our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you and deliver you from all your sin to our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you for his service by the power of the Holy Spirit, and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let's stand together, brothers and sisters, in Christ. Now we have been put right with God through faith in Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. So we must make peace with one another in the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let's share peace with one another. And uh, without shaking hands, for those who are at home, you can also share this uh, with your family. Together we pray this prayer. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. 
For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Brother and sister in Christ, live up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's not only right, it's our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And now we give you thanks, because in coming to dwell among us men, He revealed the radiance of His glory and brought us out of darkness into His own marvelous light. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this cream to proclaim the glory of your name, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Please kneel or sit. All glory to you, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy, you give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. You make day a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, offerings once for all, his one sacrifice of himself. He instituted, and in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear this, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we who receive this gift of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and suffering, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Whom the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks, and he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Together we proclaim, Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Blessed are those who are invited to the Feast of the Lamb. The gift of God for the people of God. Draw near with faith and humbly receive this bread and wine. And remember that Christ died for you and feed on you in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. The body and the blood of Lord Jesus Christ keep you in the eternal life. Amen. For those at home, you may partake your Holy, Holy Communion now. For those of us who can receive Holy Communion, uh, please uh, stand where you are so we will distribute the Holy Communion to you. Thank you.
the Lord's Prayer. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanksgiving. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have accepted us as living members of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Amen. May the peace of God be past us all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. We sing the closing hymn, hymn number 426. Another year is dawning. <laughs> 